Peter Millard, he was an academic at the University of Saskatchewan. He taught English and specialized in the 18th century. Um, but beyond his academic career, which was very successful, he had a major influence here in the province, both in the visual arts and in the early efforts to advance the rights of gays and lesbians. Peter Millard had a strong interest in folk art, naive art, which is a strong tradition in this province. And he would frequent the Saskatoon exhibitions, local art exhibition that would be on every year, uh, trying to find some hidden master there. And he discovered Dmitry Striak, who was one of the most intriguing artists in Peter's opinion. Uh, quite a different uh, difference from the, I guess you call the garden variety Sunday painter. Dmitry Striak was born in 1899 in Ukraine, which was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. His uh, early childhood was uh, fairly reasonable. There were no real hardships. His father owned some land. Uh, then when he was 18, he was conscripted into the army and ended up fighting in two wars. And that was very rough. He didn't like to talk about it too much. Eventually, when he went back home, he, he married. And then in 1923, he went to uh, Vonda with his wife and his wife's family. About three years later, he went to work for the CN uh, and worked there until his retirement at age 65. He had a son, a photographer in Humboldt, who died quite young at age 51. And then Demetra's wife died in 1967. Uh, which really devastated Dimitra quite, quite badly. When he was in Hafford, he was doing some artwork there, uh, but none of it really survives that we know of. And he really started to paint when he moved to Saskatoon. And Peter was intrigued by this man. He saw him year after year from 75 to 79. And in 1978, Peter became the judge for this exhibition. And his chance for him, he thought, to get to meet Dimitri firsthand, who they had sent the works in. Peter, however, convinced the other jurors to award the first prize ribbon to Dimitri, uh, much to the consternation of one of the jurors who just couldn't quite see what that was all about. But the following year, Peter did get a chance to meet Dimitri via Louise Walters. Uh, she was an instructor at the Mental Art Gallery. Now Louise knew Dimitri because she was familiar with an exhibition in 1975 uh, called Saskatchewan Primitives and Dimitri had several works in there and that followed uh, Peter describes how he goes to Dimitri's I guess his, his rented room he had in a rooming house and he goes there Dimitri pulls out this battered suitcase opens it up and takes out about 20 small paintings and spreads them out on the bed well Peter was very taken by these works and he acquired several of them on the spot. And this began a lifetime uh, friendship and relationship between Peter and Dimitro. Dimitro liked to use model airplane paints, uh, especially in the later years. And this provided a lot of brilliance in his painting. He liked to apply them in small dots and patches of color which added to a jewel-like feeling. Uh, this was particularly true of, I guess what I'd call, almost iconic painting. He would uh, make a jewel-encrusted cross, which would be so beautifully colored with gold and silver paints. Uh, he would decorate the uh, robes of a priest or the bishop or the pope, in fact. And even the, one of his memorable works, of amazing butterfly painting, where the whole thing is almost like a jewel enamel clasp for what you'd wear, you know, on your, um, your shirt or your blouse. But it doesn't mean that he didn't also know how to do painterly stuff. He would actually be able to, he would thin this, this uh, tester paints out sometimes and he would be very much of a painterly effect. In the early days he used watercolors. A lot of his later paintings had less and less of the model paints on them, these, these enamel paints, because Dimitri would add these after the underpainting was dried and the, the sketching, the drawing part, and people would pick these up before Dimitri even actually finished 
per se, and hence they wouldn't get their full allotment of enamel. But if Demetri went back to a painting, again and again, it actually got richer and richer if it, got, it was so lucky as to be left long enough. Trying the Colors was an exhibition organized by the Thunder Bay Art Gallery in 1988. The idea came as a result of Peter Millard having written a, quite a wonderful book of uh, the same title. And I had just recently moved from Regina, where I was curator, and to Thunder Bay, and I felt it would be a really nice thing to do to organize a national touring show to me, because he certainly deserves it. And Peter was very supportive of this, of course. And the community in Thunder Bay were very receptive, very large Ukrainian community. And I mention this because the Ukrainian aspect of Dmitro has always run throughout his career and his promotion of his artwork. And that kind of a dynamic uh, definitely was instrumental in the success of the exhibition. It toured to the Ukrainian Center in Toronto, Winnipeg Art Gallery, Glenbow Museum, the Ukrainian Cultural Center here, and indeed the Mackenzie itself after Thunder Bay. Um, the title is interesting. We discussed extensively the title of the book and the exhibition because I felt that it should be a really a catchy, grabby title. And I had come across a reference, one of Yeats's poems, Sailing Through Byzantium, and there's a beautiful line there called, referring to man's holy fire. And for me that's Demetrio. Demetrio is not only a very religious man, very intense man, but his eyes were intense, his art burned deeply, they were very alive and strong works. But Peter felt that he did not want a religious sounding title to the project. So uh, the decision was made to go with trying the colors, based on the experience that Peter had with Demetrio when Peter asked him about a series of small paintings, uh, abstract things with, with uh, rectangles, and uh, triangles, and Dmitri said, he said, Dmitri, what are these, what are you doing, what are these called? He said, just trying the colors, Dmitri says to Peter, and Peter oh, uh, colors what Dmitri is all about, he's one of the finest colorists in Canada. Peter was always interested in introducing Dmitri's work to anyone in the city who he thought could be interested, and usually this took place during uh, arranged visits to Dimitro's apartment, which, which was in McCaskill Manor, a senior's residence on 20th Street. And uh, I also began taking people to visit Dimitro. The formula was almost always the same. We would make an appointment and Dimitro would be at the front entrance to the apartment home waiting for us. An introductory visit to Dimitro's apartment would uh, start with walking in and being absolutely astounded by all these paintings up on racks, on the walls, and all over the floor, and even a painting that he was still working on on his table. And the prospective buyer would look around and ask, uh, why did you paint this, Dimitro? What's this about? I like this one. This is quite nice and would perhaps make a preliminary uh, selection and then afterwards everyone would go out to a local restaurant for supper. Now this restaurant actually served a couple of purposes. First of all, it's sort of a bit of respite from all the intense colors and images that we were confronted with, a chance to think about what we saw, but it also was very much for Dimitro a social event, a social outing. He, he probably value that as much as actually selling his paintings. After dinner, everyone would go back to Dimitro's apartment and they would make their final selection. Sooner or later, the bargaining would begin. How much is this painting, Dimitro? How much you give me? Initially, it was a bit embarrassing to those like me unfamiliar with barter. Well, I don't know. You tell me how much. Then as often as not, Dimitro would go off on another subject completely. And he would have to wait for another opportunity to bring up the pricing. The price is varied according to the subject matter and the size of the painting and even to the general mood of the evening. 
Yeah, the prices were definitely variable, but generally a large historical painting or one of religious or Ukrainian subject matter, at least initially, were higher, more highly valued by Dimitro, whereas you could get a nice little flower or uh, landscape quite, uh, quite cheaply. However, when it came to pricing, the attractive blonde woman always had the automatic advantage. <laughs> so true. <laughs>